All right, engineering students, let's take a look at how to make some measurements uh, on a drawing or, in your case, probably an assembly of your solar setup. And we're going to use a, a new feature that we haven't used in the class before, which can make some of these measurements that we need for our tipping calculations, hopefully relatively quickly. One of the things I hope that you're understanding or you're getting the idea of is how you set your drawings up uh, can make things later down the line much easier. So if I spend a little time thinking about how I set my sketches up on these planes, I can use those planes for points of measurement. And that's what we're going to do in this activity here. One of the first things we need to know, however, before we can do any sort of uh, tipping calculations, we need to know the weight of the object. Remember, the weight acts at the center of gravity. So we're going to find those two pieces of information. What's the weight and where is the center of gravity? Inventor does it lickety split. So we have actually have an idea of how to find the, the weight, right? I properties will tell us. I made what I thought was a decent sized table. I made it out of oak, which is a pretty hard and dense wood. And uh, it is pretty heavy. This table is 380 pounds, 300, a little under 380 pounds. I'm going to write that down and I'm going to need to know that. Okay. Next thing I want to know is I want to know where does that weight act? It acts at its center of gravity. So as long as there's support under the center of gravity, we expect the table to stand. How do I fi find the center of gravity? It's under view. And I just click and it'll show up there and I'll pan around here, right? We see where that center of gravity is. I'm gonna straighten this up and I can use this feature. Look at that and it'll bring me to there. Makes sense that the center of gravity is a little, it's not actually in the object itself, but it's uh, a little bit underneath uh, uh, the top surface. If I rotate this around, right, we can see that the center of gravity, the location doesn't actually change. So now we need to make a few simple measurements. If you remember, what's important for the tipping calculations is how far above the ground um, we're going to be pushing from, I should say. So we imagine someone pushing over in this orient this direction. And uh, remember, in order for tipping, or in order for something to not tip, the center of gravity needs to have some support uh, underneath it. So what we're interested in is if we're going to tip this thing, and maybe it's going to pivot around here, uh, how far away from the center of gravity uh, is this point? So let's go ahead and see how we go make make those. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to record um, the distance to where I'm going to push. And I might even know it just by based on the dimensions of how I build it, but let me show you a way to do it. Again, yours might be a little bit more of a complicated shape, so this idea uh, might be helpful. I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to find then uh, a plane that I want to measure from. I'm going to set an offset one from it. So I'll click on the visibility. I'll do offset from plane. And I'll click on that plane. It wants to naturally bring it up. I'm going to drag it down, and I know that I think that that was uh, 36 inches, 3 feet. I always do that. All right, I need to try that again. Minus, whoops, minus 36. I'm going to hit OK. So there, it's given me a plane at the very bottom in that case. So I can make a measurement, and again, I know this measurement, but maybe you don't know the measurement of what you're trying to, to measure. So oops, I want to get back in my tools tab, I'm sorry, tools. And I want to measure from one plane to the next, and then we got this little distance thing here, so we'll go if we click on this one and go up and click this one, and it tells me it's 36 inches. So I'm going to imagine when I do my analysis that I'm going to push uh, to the right here at a height of 36 inches above where I'm going to say this thing is going to pivot. It's going to pivot or rotate around this corner of the, this leg. So 36 is important. The height above uh, the ground that I'm pushing from, I'm going to write that down, 36. The other piece of information that's important is how far uh, can this center of gravity move uh, until it's directly over that, that pivot. So really what I need is I need the distance or half of the width. And there's a couple of ways that we can do that too. If I'm in the tools pad, I'm going to orient this and I'm going to go ahead and do another distance measurement. I'm going to measure from this line to that plane that grabbed it, and it tells me that that distance, 
I can see it right here. This is the distance from here to the plane. I may want to reorient that, so make sure that, because sometimes looking in two dimensions at a three-dimensional object is a little, uh, there's some distortion. This distance, that's half of this width. So it, mine says it's 18, and I'm going to write that down as well, 18 inches. And we're going to see how do we use that measure, th those measurements here. The point of this little short video is if given a little thought of how you make your sketches and extrude from, make some measurements uh, that we're going to do later much simpler. So give that a little thought.